New York City made history not so long ago when the council passed new funds for cultivating cooperative businesses. Some of those are now well in the works. We went out to take a look at how things were progressing. The Northeast Brooklyn Housing Development Corporation started about 30 years ago. Uh, we're mostly a low-income housing developer, manager, and owner throughout four neighborhoods in Northeast Brooklyn. We have a whole community programs department that works on tenant services, but then we've also been running a food pantry for about 20 years. And we've recently converted that food pantry uh, to a client choice food pantry, which is located downstairs. Two years ago, I was brought on um, to design and manage a program called Communities for Healthy Food. So we did a community scan, a needs assessment of the neighborhood, tried to understand who was doing the good work around food, what work still needed to be done, what our resources were that we could throw in. And we really asked the question, well, what's going on with food here? You know, there are parts of the community that feel hopeless in a way. You know, like they're like, oh, there's all these changes happening, there are a lot of new people coming in to Brooklyn, into Bed-Stuy, and they feel a little lost. What we found through talking to neighborhood residents and our community partners was that good food is here in, in Bed-Stuy, despite some people calling it a, a food desert, it's really not. What's going on here is that a lot of good food is coming into the neighborhood along with this wave of gentrification, but just like the housing, it's too expensive for the people who have lived in this neighborhood for a long time. So our solution to that is to design programming that creates jobs, so it puts more money into people's pockets so that it c they can afford the good food that's in the neighborhood and also drive down cost of food in the neighborhood. We uh, own and operate a local grocery store in bed called bed Fresh and Local. We made an effort to hire youth from the neighborhood and um, have worked with uh, uh, Exalt, which is like an internship program for like youth that have had run-ins with the law and stuff. And, um, we've gotten some of our like best employees like through those programs and, um, you know before the store I've called Bedside home for like many years but with the store I'm like really proud. We're part of a project to uh, start a central book and food co-op. Uh, we've also brought in a farmers market into the neighborhood directly that directly serves low-income people um, and we're working with bodegas a couple of bodegas that are our tenants actually uh, to increase their healthy food options. So that's some of the ways that we're like trying to make food a little bit more affordable for folks. And then on the other side, we're also, we have a whole community chef training program. So for all of our culinary courses, they're led by members of the community and we've trained them and we pay them well for their work. Um, and then the final piece is this, uh, is this cooperative business project. And that is where I kind of lay most of my hope for, for change in this neighborhood. By working with the working world, we can really change the economy of this neighborhood. There's a prejudice in the market even against cooperatives. The idea that people can actually be democratic and get along and make decisions together somehow is seen as um, it's, it, it's sort of radical and that, that, that can't be true and um, dangerous. And to face that kind of prejudice already, uh, to have the few resources they had to bear and to have gotten to the places the business have gotten, it certainly makes me convinced we should keep working at this. So many people are talking about bringing supermarkets into the neighborhood. And I keep asking the question, well, what kind of jobs are supermarkets creating? $8 an hour jobs? How is that changing the nature of this neighborhood at all? Um, so what we want to see is cooperatively owned supermarkets or cooperatively owned businesses in some way. And that can actually completely change the landscape of what's happening here. We heard about these uh, workshops from NEPCO I don't know, a couple months ago, and we were so excited, and I remember coming to the first meeting, and you weren't able to come with us, or with me, and I remember coming home from the first meeting and being like, oh my God, we have to do this, like, this is so <laughs> exciting, because when we actually were planning the business, uh, we had thought about opening as a co-op, but we just d couldn't really get our heads around the concept, um, so this was really exciting. We want to start a bed Cooperative Council that is led by the people who are starting the businesses, and also people who are leaders in bed -Stuy. Um, to really come in onto, onto the project. Um, and so, you know, we'll start these, hopefully start a few businesses to get going, and then hopefully those businesses will be paying back those loans, and we'll grow the revolving loan fund, and we'll start more businesses and, and have, a, you know, a good cooperative going here.
because general certification is that it's electrical, but there are other ones as well that you can. I'm a local three electrician at top grade, and as long as I work for other people, I won't be able to be financially dependent because my job depends on whether there is work or if someone wants to keep me employed, and I have other goals, such as starting my own business. I'm a certified pesticide applicator, and I want to establish a business that is a worker cooperative for pesticide applicators. A business is a really is a concept everybody can understand, but when you throw the word cooperative in there, a lot of people don't understand what it is. So when we were going to you know, approach doing outreach for this, we just had no idea if people were going to be receptive to it at all. Um, and so we decided to pilot the program by doing three introductory workshops, and they would all be essentially uh, co-op 101. And we really thought we would maybe get at most 12 participants registered for this class. We now have, I think, 37 registered for this class. So there's clearly a lot of like desire for this here. I know that a lot of businesses or individual owners can't always maintain their businesses because they don't always have the classes or the knowledge. Or, so that's why I feel like something like this, this class, this workshop, is really great because it breaks it down into you know, kind of layman terms. And the staff is really open and friendly and um, there are a number of people that kind of give you um, their own perspectives on how to approach a co-op. So I think that's beneficial. The details of um, running a co-op and establishing a co-op are um, more um, intricate than I thought they were. Um, and an appreciation for the human dynamic that's involved is also something that the class points out. Um, decisions that that a person could make in a, in a uh, privately owned business will probably take a lot longer in a cooperative. But I think that um, the energy that comes out of a cooperative will be much, much greater. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever even heard of a worker owner cooperative. And we're eight weeks in, and it's very interesting where I believe that all workers will have more incentive to work harder because they own it. So more of the profits go back to ourselves. It builds a community as far as bringing employment into communities. And I'm a member of the community, as well as my son. So I would love to see it thrive, which would give me more incentive to live here as opposed to move upstate in five years. <laughs> After the success of our first attempts at doing a cooperative academy in the Rockaways, we decided to double down on the strategy of doing really uh, place-based at the level of a neighborhood kind of um, economic activity, locally controlled, community controlled, worker controlled economic activity. Uh, we found it very successful to bring people together as a group of peers, um, help them set up a local cooperative council to have a, a, a repository, a place to start building um, the, the experience, the memory of all the skills it takes to build business, kind of rediscover that process of how people can be successfully productive. Um, and we really see it as a really powerful way to have communities not only come together, but to actually have ac true economic power as a community. What the cooperative does and what this workshop does specifically in breaking down what a cooperative does um, is empowers people. Given the, the city council funding that the collective of uh, co-op organizations got last year, including the working world, I think there's support there. I think the de Blasio administration, a lot of people that I've met in the city council are excited about co-op cooperatives. And I think there's a lot of growing interest in that too. So I think if we build it, uh, they will fund. bed -Stuy absolutely has everything, all the ingredients to make a vibrant community of cooperatives. I'm really excited about um, <laughs> building here and I think it can be a great example to lead the way for other communities to do the same. As the, you know, America as a country, as the world's been changing, as the economy has changed, as the culture's changed, um, people are looking for or need more alternatives. But the cooperative is a, is a very good alternative. It, it empowers everybody involved in it, and it doesn't um, leave decisions in the hands of um, one small group of people. Um, and I think that it, it, it values work. 
we need good jobs. We need jobs where we can make decisions on our own. Um, and I think that resonated with people big time.